you know, the Methodism is one of the biggest Protestant denominations in the United States. As a matter of fact, according to the church, more than eight million Americans call themselves a member. Started in England as a movement within the Church of England, the Methodist Church in America was essentially born right here on Delmarva at a place we now call a Delmarva treasure. For more than 235 years, Barrett's Chapel outside Frederica has stood tall among the flat landscape of Southern Kent County, Delaware. It has also stood the test of time as a landmark in the history of Methodism. We sometimes call it the Independence Hall of Methodism. Barrett's Chapel was built in 1780 as a meeting hall for the growing Methodist movement that was started in England by John and Charles Wesley. Francis Asbury and other lay preachers were sent to the colonies to spread the Methodist message. They started some small Methodist societies over here and wrote back to Wesley and said, we want uh, Methodist preachers. So he sent eight preachers, two at a time, over several years period, uh, the most famous one being Francis Asbury, who landed in America and started circulating and uh, carrying the message to any place that they could. Uh, when the Revolutionary War broke out, all of them except Francis Asbury and one other man went back to England. In fact, Asbury took safe haven on Delmarva. He felt very much at home here. Then, in 1784, when the war was over, John Wesley sent Thomas Koch to America to find Asbury and discuss the future of American Methodism. On Sunday, November 14, 1784, Koch came to Barrett's Chapel and was invited to preach. During the sermon, Asbury arrived. In the middle of the service, the story is he came in the back door. Asbury walked in the door in the middle of Koch's sermon, effectively interrupting the sermon. And the story is came down, the reports came down out of the pulpit and the two embraced and he went back up in the pulpit and finished his, his sermon. It was during this service the sacraments of baptism and communion were administered for the first time in America by ordained Methodist clergy. It was really started here. Um, it became a church here. This is where Methodism became a church. Barrett's Chapel continued to be a popular Methodist meeting place with seating for more than 500 people. It was built on the main highway through Delaware. What we know as Route 1 was there in the 18th century. Although actually it was out here where the driveway is. So that's the front of the building. Uh, that was facing the main highway. But as the nearby town of Frederica grew, so did the need for worship space closer to the people. The last congregation to meet here dissolved in 1956. The building was eventually purchased by the Methodist Conference to be preserved as an historic site. They can come over to the chapel and see it pretty much as it was built in, in 1780. Barb Duffin is curator of the site, which now includes a museum and resource library. A lot of books on Methodist history. There are also journals of different ministers. We have journals from uh, not the original journals, but published copies of Francis Asbury's journals, John Wesley's journals, Thomas Koch. So ministers and other people can do research on Methodism. The chapel itself has been preserved to reflect its original design with a few minor changes. Originally the pulpit was high up on the wall and it was lowered in the 1800s. One thing that really interests them are these benches that they sit on in here, they're very uncomfortable. They were made by the undertaker down in Frederica between 1820 and 1840. A vestry or smaller meeting room behind the chapel was relocated when unmarked graves were discovered in its original location. There's burials out there, all crisscrossed on top of each other and it's obviously where the cemetery had been burying people in the 19th century that couldn't afford a plot. So, we just put a stone there to recognize that and rebuilt the building to the north of the museum. Some of the graves that are marked in the adjacent cemetery date back to when the chapel was built. Although not a church, Barrett's Chapel is still a place of worship. During the summer, May through September, we have Thursday night worship services here with uh, various preachers from churches in the conference. It's also used for other events. We have a Christmas Eve communion service with the bishop, which usually fills the chapel. Uh, in November, we always have a special, uh, we have an anniversary service 
the 14th of November is close to the second Sunday of November. And the museum continues to grow with everything from items belonging to original bishops to church plates from some of the more than 400 churches that are part of the Delaware, Maryland United Methodist Conference. We are the depository for the Peninsula Delaware Conference archives and we have a lot of the membership books from closed churches. So they come here looking for marriage records, baptism records, even memberships you know, of their ancestors. But to many around the country, Barrett's will always be known as the most important Methodist historical structure in the nation. To us, it's a Delmarva treasure. So you may be asking, why is it called Barrett's Chapel? Well, it was built by Philip Barrett, a prominent political figure in the area. At the time, the Methodist Society appealed to people of lower social status. Barrett wanted the Methodists in the area to have a grand building. Unfortunately, he died just a couple weeks before that infamous meeting between Koch and Asbury, so he was unable to see how his building became a pivotal part of American history. Oh my goodness. Yeah. And and what a neat place. Carol and I have some friends who were married in there. Oh yeah? And I, it, to me, I think it's simplicity is what makes it so yeah. beautiful. Yeah. Absolutely. Great job on that. Thank, Thank you for you. bringing it. That was awesome. Very interesting. Well, something else that's beautiful in Delmarva, when fall sets in, the colors, the chill in the air. Mm. Up next on Delmarva Live, we're getting your yard ready for the season, starting with your grass. Pretty soon it's going to look a little drab, but we're going to show you the latest trend in keeping your grass green, and it doesn't even take one drop of water. Well, many of us will soon search for that perfect pumpkin, and then months from now, a Christmas tree. Hear how the mild summer we've had has impacted holiday crops. And something else is going to soon pop up, mums. But they're more than just a decorative fall plant. Gardening expert Jenny Rosencrantz shows us how to turn mums into a perennial plant. The Marvel Life will be right back. <laughs> 